Good morning and welcome to Heartland Dual Sport. Today we're going to be going over part two of what we take on our bikes with us and uh, it's going to be the last half of the bike. This is going to be our camping gear and uh, that type of stuff, but uh, let's get started. Thanks for tuning in to Heartland Dual Sport again. My name is Dale and uh, we're going to be going over the last half of the bike and this again is a, it's what we pack with us when we're on a multi-day trip. I've got video one out. If you haven't seen the first video, feel free to, uh, I'll put a link somewhere right over in here where you can click over and watch part one. But this is going to be part two of what we take on a multi-day trip and we'll just go, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and uh, I'll kind of show you one of the things that I really love about Wolfman is I, I mentioned these straps in the earlier video and uh, these are self-tightening. You can just kind of pull on it to adjust the tightness, but there's plenty of tie-downs on the Wolfman gear so you can actually tie your other bags on. But uh, this here, we'll go ahead and get started with this. And if you guys are wondering, these smaller straps right here are the rock strap, they're the 42 inch. The bigger one here is the uh, 60 inch. And this bag here has got uh, most of my sleeping gear in it. And it is a Yukon Outfitters. If you remember when we did a video earlier in the year about the Yukon hammocks, I went ahead and bought the two dry bags. And this will kind of be a review for the dry bags. I was really pleased with them. I've taken this, uh, this bag with me and it's been on two trips now so probably about 600 miles and I've had zero issues or complaints about these bags. They are a little bit thinner than some of the other bags but they've actually held up nicely. They've been through water, they've been through rain, they've actually been in water when the bike fell over in the water so they kept everything dry and I'm real pleased to uh, share this with you. But let's go ahead and open up the bag and I'll show you what we got on this one. This is going to be an under quilt for when it's, uh, when it's colder. I've got the under quilt. I'll probably go ahead and take this back out. I probably won't be needing it again this year because it's, uh, it's uh, actually getting to that point where we're not going to need it. This is a uh, sleeping bag liner. And actually, I normally always carry this on top. This is going to be my rain fly for my hammock. Again, this is a Hennessy rain fly for a Hennessy hammock. And I always keep it on top. And the reason being is if it's raining somewhere, you want to be able to get to your hammock or your uh, tarp. You can get it set up first. And then you've got a dry space to work on under when, uh, when it's raining or something like that. Because a lot of times in Oklahoma, especially in the springtime, it's raining. This is an extra blanket that I carry when it's cold. Again, this will be something that will come out. We're not going to be needing that the rest of the summer, but this is made by Carhartt. If uh, any of you guys didn't know, Carhartt makes a blanket and uh, it's actually pretty awesome, pretty light and folds up small. And then I use that as a pad as well for my feet when it's cold outside. And then uh, <clears throat> this is the Hennessy Hammock. It is the Safari Deluxe. It's actually a little bit bigger than uh, some of the other hammocks, this is probably their biggest hammock they make, and I, I did that twofold. I'm kind of a big guy, and then I also, I will keep a certain amount of gear inside the hammock with me when I'm sleeping, but you can tie your gear up on the ends, still have plenty of room to sleep and stay dry. One of the big perks about the Hennessy hammock is it does have the bug net on it, and in Oklahoma we have lots of mosquitoes, that type of stuff, and I think last year there was, five, ten people that died from some sort of mosquito related bite that um, went to their demise. And that's just something important to me. I'm not extremely scared of bugs, but uh, when I'm sleeping I don't want to wake up with bugs biting me. So I do like that. And that is all that's in this front dry bag. Again, the dry bag is made by Yukon. And I'll put a link to the Yukon dry bags. I believe I got them on Amazon or you can buy direct from their site. But uh, instead of, I'll, I'll fast forward this so you're not watching me put all my junk back. But that's all 
pretty much all my sleeping gear, minus the sleeping bag. And again, the last thing I load is the tarp, put it on top. And again, that's the dry bag made by Yukon Outfitters. Okay, and here's the rest of the sleep gear. As you can see, I've got rock strap holding it on, and I run it through the actual handle so that it doesn't wiggle loose, and then I've got the other straps on top. And basically all I have in here is my sleep bag. And this is a Kelty down insulated. And it's uh, called the Cosmic. I don't know if you can see that. Kelty Cosmic down insulated sleeping bag. This one's rated for down to, uh, I believe 10 degrees, 15 degrees, something like that. So when you sleep in early spring weather in Oklahoma, I mean, that's not a bad thing to have. And then also with my sleep bag, I have, uh, again, this was uh, packed for cold springtime weather. I've got extra pair of shorts, insulated top and bottom. That's going to be a, for a multi-layer deal, so it's going to be the thinner insulated. And a lot of times that isn't a bad thing to have when you're camping. If it's going to be getting cold at night, just leave it in your sleep bag gear. And then also an extra pair of really warm, thick socks. And it stays in the bottom. And then the sleep bag goes on top. And then the, the last thing that I have on the back of the bike is going to be the sleep pad. Again, the sleeping pad, when you start getting into the hotter months, it's going to be something that it will be obsolete. I'm just not going to carry it. Um, but one good thing about the sleeping pad, and I'll go ahead and tell you for you guys that haven't been hammock camping in a while, your sleeping pad's dual, dual purpose. Your sleeping bags are actually rated for sleeping on the ground. So if you have a 20 degree bag, for example, I believe you need to add about 30, 15 degrees to that if you're going to be sleeping in the hammock. And the reason being, when you're sleeping in the hammock, you got air coming in on top of you and below you. So that 20 degree bag is really going to be like a 35 degree bag as far as your uh, temperature comfort. And I believe that's about right. 15 degree difference. If you'll put a pad in the bottom, that will help and it'll get you back closer to the temperature range that you need to be. Also, uh, it keeps mosquitoes from biting you from the bottom of your bottom, the underside of your uh, hammock. So I, I actually carry this quite a bit, but it, like I say, in the heat of the summer, it's not going to be necessary. There are other sleeping pads out there. This thing is super light, and uh, it, it, it does add some bulk, but I've seen some of the other ones where they'll fold down nice and pretty, but uh, you know, that's just a choice. To me, this is like 10 bucks at Walmart versus $100 or more for one of the fancier ones. And, and that's just a personal call, whatever a guy wants to do. But I've had no issues sleeping in my hammock with or without the pad. So like I say, I'll go ahead and probably discard this for extreme temperatures in the summertime. Okay, then back to the bag. I've got uh, got another medical kit on this side. This one has quite a bit more stuff in it. But as you can see, it's got the Red Cross on it, so anybody that's walking by your bike, I'll be able to figure out that uh, that's a first aid kit in here. I've also got a tie in a knot. I think I've showed you guys in another video on backpacks, how you can keep your zippers from coming undone using the strings. And uh, it's with the Wolfman backpack if you want to watch that video. But that's how I always tied up. I've never had anything come out of here, but uh, I'll show you real quick what's in this case. And it's actually cool. I've got uh, some ibuprofen, a lighter, a chapstick, and then I've got another case inside here that uh, kind of helps cut down on the amount of dust and stuff that'll be on your band-aids and whatnot. I've got an emergency blanket, I've got the rubber gloves, uh, some extra gauze, padding, I've got some, uh, let's see here, 
some neosporin type swabs, regular band-aids, uh, bigger gauze pads, bigger band-aids, q-tips, and uh, some sterile wipes in there also. And that's uh, all compressed down. Again, I've got uh, a couple of toothpicks, and uh, inside this pill bottle is my daily vitamins and blood pressure meds that I'm supposed to take. And there's some more of the alcohol breath wipes. This is just an old bandage from a different injury. And uh, real quick, I want to show you this. This is it's called light load towels and this tiny little thing actually will it's almost the size of a full-size towel you can put two or three they've got different sizes I'll put some links on Amazon so you guys can pull these up but these are actually pretty awesome you can use these uh, just like a regular towel but you're not carrying around a huge towel so if you get out of the shower you can actually dry off with these things use it like a hand towel around camp I've got different sizes, but uh, that's always handy if you needed a, you know, you could make a tarp out of this if you needed to. And that's another reason that I had the, the blanket in here as well, the emergency blanket. It could be made into a tarp as well. And uh, again, I think I already told you I got a lighter and then there's some hand soap and some just general cleaner in here as well. So that's everything in first aid kit as you can see I've been riding through mud and muddy water and stuff but everything on the inside of this bag is actually dry and dust free for the most part and again just loop these through a couple of times the little pulls and that keeps it from if it gets hung up on something it'll actually uh, zip the other side while it's unzipped on one side. This has got the mole type pouch. I initially had this on my backpack. The Wolfman has the mole stuff, but it started getting too heavy and I didn't want to carry that much weight, so uh, I've got it tied to the side of this bag over here. And again, I've got the cross on it so you can see and anybody that's riding by or whatever if I'm down, they'll be able to see that's first aid kit right there handy on the outside of the bag. As we carry on, let's continue here we've got uh, we'll go ahead and unload this saddlebag first and I'll show you what I got in here this is again it's the Wolfman E12 saddlebags and uh, you know I don't know if a guy could carry too much first aid kit stuff but this is another first aid kit and it's got a little bit of everything in it as well it's got a velcro closure on it it's got a tourniquet, it's got a uh, quick cloth, and uh, it's got some rubber gloves and whatnot in here as well. And again, I probably carry too much first aid stuff, but uh, I'm out a lot by myself, and uh, I like to keep stuff where I can get to it handy if I need it. But this is just another first aid kit, and I use the straps off of the uh, bottles for the uh, Wolfman ball carriers to hold it on. And as you can see, like I was telling you earlier, the Wolfman, the way they've designed all their bags, you can actually tie a bunch of other stuff on. I initially bought these water bottle carriers to go on the side of the Wolfman backpack as well, but again, it was too much weight. This is this one's full of gas, and on the other side, I've got the kerosene for the cook stove. But uh, this gives me a little more gas for out on a long track. I knew when we was riding the K Trail that it was going to be pretty far between gas stops. And I did end up having to use my roto pack to get back to another gas station. We'll get to the roto pack here in a little bit and we'll go ahead and finish up what's on this side. And again, over here, I've got a uh, coffee cup, I've got my cook stove, I've got a lighter, I've got uh, some more energy bars and then I've got I think I mentioned it before I always carry a bunch of trash sacks with me just some more trash sacks and I've got uh, scissors and scalpel type stuff for emergency first aid kit in here as well and 
then this is also where I put uh, my food, the MRE type meals, soups, and uh, stuff like that to trail light on it. So it all goes in there. I put all the heavier stuff down on the bottom. And uh, you can actually get three or four cans of soup in here or uh, the MREs as well. There's plenty of room. And uh, that's on this side. We'll go around here to the other side. Get these straps out of the way. We'll go ahead and go over this bag next, and then we'll go to the other side of the bag. This bag here actually holds quite a bit of stuff. This is the Wolfman Beta bag. And in it, I like to carry shoes with me. We'll lay the shoes out. I've got uh, extra change of clothes in here. This is going to be for night one. It's got extra shorts, shirt, dry socks. Night two, same thing. Extra shorts, shirt, dry socks. And this is the first aid kit for my bike. And it's got quite a bit of tools. I'll come back to this tool bag because I know we're running the long on the video again. Here's a extra hat in case you need it. Sometimes I get cold, I don't have near as much hair on as I used to, so I carry a hat. Got it for the sleep bag. I got an extra knob. This is a Click Elite chair. It's actually pretty awesome. It's not, not very heavy and it folds up nice and flat and small. And I see this is kind of one of those deals that your grandpa had when he was a kid. Maybe you've seen something like this when you was fishing or whatever. As a kid, I know my grandpa used to have some of these, but uh, it's a great little chair. It's, uh, this is just going to be a, something for comfort. It's not obviously needed for a trip, but it uh, makes it handy when you're getting out of your hammock and you're just trying to get your boots on and you know get camp wrapped up. You have some place to sit because I do use my hammock a lot as my chair. But this, if you want to scoot up next to the fire, you, can, you got a chair handy also. And let's see here. I've got a bad knee. I broke my left knee a few years ago. Actually, about two years ago. So I carry an extra brace just in case my knee needs to go out on me. Here's some more. Uh, air cartridges for the air tank and some snacks. See here I've got a little bit of gas line in case I need to siphon some gas. Got a little bit of oil and then I've got uh, this is a awesome little deal here. It's actually another little blanket. And it's, it's in a sealed protected deal so it's dry. I'm not going to use this unless it's more like an emergency. That way I've got a dry blanket if need be. This is a slime air compressor. I put the 12 volt deal in here. Again I don't want to use the battery on my bike unless I have to but you've seen I've got the little CO2 deals to air up the tires. If I just need a little bit of air or um, you know changing the tire pressure from dirt to road or whatever this is real real simple to use also. I've, I've carried this in a couple of different places. I've carried it in the side bags and I've carried it in the back and honestly it's just easier to use the CO2 cartridge that's actually small, lightweight, easy to get to. Even if you lose half of your air because you didn't use it all, it's a little bit more convenient than this because it's so big and bulky. So I keep it in this bag and that's not always easy to get to. I also carry the extra bolts and nuts and these are your common bolt sizes and if you remember on the K trail my finger fell off I did have the extra enough bolts in here to go ahead and fix that when I got to camp so that's actually pretty awesome I've got some fire starters and I've got a splint this splint is it's called a SAM splint it's got some kind of metal in it, so it will actually form up nice. If you had a, a broke arm or something like that, you can actually kind of cup it and it would go around. And it, it is a great way to stabilize some, uh, something. I also carry two of these 
as well. And then I've got uh, can opener and this is a water filter. I've also got some, uh, and it's kind of like Ben Gay, but it's called Max Freeze. It's if you want to just get sore or whatever. But this is a this is an excellent water filter. If you're out somewhere where you not going to be able to carry enough water on you. As you can see, my bike's loaded down, so I've got the hydration pack in the uh, backpack, and then I also have another hydration pack that slips into my uh, Rocky Mountain ATV Battleborn coat that I wear. So that way I can fill up my water bladders with fresh water out of the streams or whatever. Got some emergency tape, can opener, and that's all that's in the big, and then let's see what's in the big part of the bag. And then, it, of course, you know, I also could carry some jeans or whatever if I need them, extra jeans and whatnot. This has got all my uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, toothpicks, camp soap. It's made by Camp Suds. The good thing about this is you do not have to have water to rinse it off. It's kind of like that no tool hand cleaner. It's waterless, so you can clean your hands up, you can clean your body up, and it wipes right off. It doesn't leave a soapy film. It's more like a, it's just a great camp soap. And then, uh, got a flashlight on the outside here. I always carry a paracord. Uh, this goes to this Roto-Pack gas can and then uh, an extra GPS. It's just small and it's old, but it does work. And if something wants to happen, I'll lose my big one if it broke off or whatever. I've got, got another GPS ready to go to get me out if I need out. And then this side over here, we have another dry bag. Got wipes, hand cleaners, uh, another quick clock type deal, and another uh, wrap for metal purposes. And again, there's plenty of room in here on both of these sides to put your MREs as well. I ate my MREs, so I don't have any of them to show you. But uh, that's what's in this bag. And you guys can see this obviously, it's roto pack. Comes off nice and easy. This is an extra 1.2 gallons of gas. Set it right there. And then on this side, and then again, the E12 has the uh, compression strap on the side. You can tighten up so the stuff doesn't really run around. But this is another bottle carrier. This one I've already got the top for. I marked it with blue so I know that it's kerosene. And also the uh, top is for the stove. And the stove plugs right into there. And then that way you've got a way to heat up your water for your coffee and that type of stuff. So this side over here, we've got an extra pair of gloves. I'm telling you, I lose gloves every time I go out. Got some hand cleaner, snacks. You can tell I like the granola bars. And then I've got this cook set. It's an MSR cook set. It's pretty awesome. It's got, uh, it's got your, you flip it upside down, you can see it's got like two bowl type things. And then in the middle I've got salt and pepper. I've also got, uh, and I'll go ahead and show you. Take this off. You got two big cups here. I've got a little bit of uh, dish soap. I've got some Clorox for sterilizing salt and pepper shakers. And there's actually a little spork, uh, spoon and fork type stuff on the bottom of that as well. But I do like having the uh, Clorox to, uh, if you need it, to sanitize some stuff that really it helps with cleaning up your stuff and just a little bit of that mixed in with some water and you've got a good clean pot you don't have to worry about getting sick and 
That's about it, guys. You can see I've got some more of the protein powders, and I've also got the energy drink mixes. And uh, I'll use them with the blender cups or whatever else I got. So that's it on this side. And again, guys, I mean, I, I went over this kind of quick. I wanted to make this video short. I've already broke it up into two series, so it would make it easier. If you guys like our video, give us a thumbs up. If you know anybody that's going to be going on a multi-day camping trip, share this video with them. I mean, there's some great information here. If there's some information or, or some tools or some things that you're taking that I don't have, go ahead and share that with me. We uh, Again, I didn't go over my riding gear. As you know, I wear the city boots. Got the Rocky Mountain uh, ATV Battleborn gear for top and bottom. When I'm in my jeans, I've got the Fox knee pads and I've got the uh, Fox armor for the top for the elbow, bat, el elbow pads, the chest protector and all that. Uh, running with uh, this helmet right here, it's been pretty nice. I can also tell by late summer that's going to be too hot for me. I'm going to end up getting a different helmet color or I'll spray paint this one white. I mean, they're cheap and easy. so. Either way, one way or another, I'll end up with something a light color. If you guys like our video, give us a thumbs up. Share our video with other people. We'd love to hear your comments. Again, if there's some things that I missed that maybe you feel like ought to be in a, in a pack, go ahead and share that with me. We've covered everything from uh, first aid kit for the bike, first aid kit for the free person, backup source. Don't rely on your iPhones, your GPS, the spot. It's going to be the way to go. The spot, one thing I didn't mention, it's got a button on it, I can push it, it'll send a message through satellite to my wife so that she knows that I'm at camp okay. The other thing, it's got a tracking device, she can be sitting at home and watching where I'm going. Spot is a super awesome deal, I'll do a video all on its own because it's such a neat deal and it's a great deal for safety. You guys can tell I'm safety conscious between myself and my bike, I want to be able to fix whatever the problem is. A lot of times you can't, and that's what the spot's for. The spot's going to be for the times I can't fix it myself. Again, uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope that you have a blessed week, and uh, let's go ride, guys.